session. Today, we're talking about how to align your processes with real-time dual right integration to the Dataverse. I'm Chad Althaus, Solution Architect here on the CE Power Platform team, and I've got eight years industry experience from manufacturing operations, Dynamics Consulting now, most recently. And so I come from end user. I like speaking at community events, and I'm just overall evangelist for Dynamics and the Power Platform, and I'm currently in Houston, and my background is actually mechanical engineering. It's Chad, this is Jawad Iftikhar. I'm the solution architect on the ERP side. I have uh, basically about 20 years of experience with Microsoft Business Applications, specializing in Dynamics 365 for finance and supply chain. Um, I specialize in solution architecture and I'm a community speaker as well. I, uh, involve, I'm, I get involved in Summit and some of the local initiatives uh, for the community. I'm in New Jersey, um, I'm an electronic engineer. All right. All right. So just a real quick summary of what's to come. The kind of the background that we're coming at this from is that ERP and CRM systems should not have to operate in silos. The cumbersome background integrations have typically been used and those don't have to be the only option. So the native dual right framework enables real time and bi-directional Synchronization between finance and supply chain management and Dataverse, and you can trust it. And Stone Ridge, we are mastering dual right. We're finding the most that most customers do need some help. It is a tool you can turn on out of the box, uh, but most customers find they need some help and support in doing it the right way. So real quick agenda, we're going to talk basics of how dual right works. We're going to talk under the hood, kind of how does it work? User experience, what does it look like to the user? Admin experience, what's it look like from the IT maintenance perspective? What have we learned so far through our, our journey uh, in implementing dual right for various customers? And then what's coming, what's next? So this is, this is actually a quote from Microsoft just talking about this idea that business concepts like customer, product, contact, address, currency, these are fundamental building blocks of a business scenario. And when you're using both front office customer engagement apps, that's sales, customer service, etc., and back office finance and operations apps, in your business ecosystem, these basic concepts, they need to be connected to create data and process, process harmony to your cross application scenarios. A lot of words there, but basically just highlighting the significance of connecting the systems and getting rid of the silos. So historically, CRM and ERP result in silo data. That, that's traditional path, and there is not much talking between them. Dynamics 365 apps, they have the name, they're part of the same family, but they don't share data natively which can cause some confusion. And historic patterns on integrating systems rely on background processes, costly development, and burdensome maintenance. There have been attempts at harmonization, at bringing them together from a Microsoft perspective, dating back to Project Green in 2004. This is where Microsoft tried to bring Exapt to Great Plains, Solomon, Navision, and CRM all on one code base. It never came to fruition. But that was kind of the origin of what we have today. And one solution that is out there today that does work is the prospect to cash solution with data integrator. And this covers a subset of what dual right does, and it, it doesn't operate in the same synchronous nature, the same real time nature that dual right uses. And virtual entities are out there as well, and they you might actually use them to supplement your dual right instance. They don't use the native first party tables that exist in the common data model. So that's one big difference. Rather than writing into the same tables, you get a new set of tables, but it's a great option for viewing finance and supply chain data from within Dataverse. So great option to, con to continue with, but it just doesn't cover all the same things that dual right does. All right, so if we come in with dual right, this is extensible framework and it's an application that makes business data across available across um, across business apps. And you can see down here, it's finance and supply chain, 
on the left and Dataverse sitting atop, atop the common data model on the right. And it's really just this tightly coupled real-time bi-directional integration for documents, master, and reference data. And so this helps unite the Dynamics 365 applications so they actually share data. When you set send an update into one system, it's going into both system at one time, and it's sharing the business logic from both. And dual rate has been generally available since 2020. So that's kind of the history of it. And since 2020, uh, it's quickly evolved. Microsoft is, is rapidly adding to this, covering additional business scenarios. And so it's come a long way. So if you've used it in the past, it's worth looking at it again. <laughs> and real quick, what is so special? This is just, uh, it's where Microsoft is putting all their money, right? So Microsoft is investing heavily. It's Microsoft's answer to unite the Dynamics applications. And it's actually the foundation for some of the core apps like human resources, project operations, field service, the new customer portal. Um, these things utilize dual right. It has a low code interface. You don't need to be a pro developer in IT or anything like that in order to maintain this. And it has offline capability. Microsoft's the only company that offers support for online and offline modes for this kind of integration. And then you can also extend with the Power Platform. So if you have an existing finance or supply chain management application, you can extend those with the Power Platform through dual right by getting the data into Dataverse where Power Platform just natively shines. All right, I'm gonna let Jawad cover this next little section here. All right, fun stuff here. Thank you, Chad. I'm going to take control quickly. And uh, let's see what's under the hood. So the architecture of dual right is, as Chad mentioned, it's a it's a dual right uh, mechanism where the physical data is actually available in both the databases. So you have production database for finance and supply chain, and then you have um, Dataverse, which is basically the backend database for uh, customer engagement apps. What happens is like when these uh, entities are shared and uh, uh, you know the the data is dual written both is available on on both the uh, both the databases um, to be used by the d365 apps or any external apps for reporting purposes i am going to move forward yes it's working chat um, all right, so solutions uh, are in this solution is installed uh, through uh, to dataverse by app source app source is um, the uh, platform which basically allows you to search and install apps which are integrated with D365, uh, whether it's ERP or uh, other D365 applications. Uh, new tables are available. Um, most recently, it started with very uh, limited amount of tables when, when the dual write was actually started or you know uh, the architecture was put in place by Microsoft, uh, but now more and more tables are available. Um, the table components, uh, there are, uh, you know, of course, we have tables and then there are table components. We now have business rules as well. So you can create, for example, business rules around customer groups um, and vendor groups. You can create business rules about uh, around different logics within these tables or data entities. Um, you have multiple table maps available. Uh, which can be set up from D365 finance and supply chain, and you can include or exclude uh, the fields which are um, additional, or you know if there are specific requirements, you know based on your specific business process you're addressing. Um, there are plugins also available right now. Uh, this is, um, as I said, these are managed from within FN, uh, finance and supply chain uh, application. Um, the two systems act as one. It's kind of the same thing which we discussed about that. You know, the, the data is written in both the systems. Now it's a very tightly coupled integration where you can, you know, uh, share the transaction uh, between these two systems. Um, sorry, updates are and, and errors occur at real time, so you can uh, basically capture these errors um, and updates. Um, these errors on the on the dataverse side and the updates can. Uh, be written on both the databases. This is a uh, this is an or orchestration um, of what an app source page look like. Um, so 
the solutions you're looking at on your screen, you can just select them and uh, download them. And you know the setup uh, is pretty simple. Moving towards the next slide is the mapping basics. So here you will find what uh, what objects or data entities are readily available. Uh, 134 table maps uh, are available at, at this point and they are expanding. Um, this is the hard, it, it says basics, but this is basically the hard part because you really have to define what exactly you're looking for. You're looking for a customer master management, you're looking for a vendor master management, you're looking for to, uh, you know, to kind of streamline your operations through both of these apps for your uh, code to cash process. You're looking for product mastering. Um, there's a, sorry, uh, we have legal entities uh, concept, which is also available between these two systems. Um, so it's very important to kind of like identify your basics, what data entities you're going to um, integrate and uh, how they're going to be integrated. Harmonization is basically uh, this slide tells you what exactly is now available, uh, you know, including all the basic uh, initial um, setups and the most recent enhancements to D365 finance and supply chain and CE through Dataverse. Um, so as I said, legal entity concept is available, integrated customer master is available, unified product mastering experience is available. So you can basically replicate your products in your ERP and your CE, um, which are very helpful for your uh, quotations process, your integration with pricing engine uh, through CE and or ERP. Um, integrated prospect to cash experience is available. Um, ability to handle multiple addresses and roles through the party concept. So um, this is basically your global address book in the ERP. And then once this address book is synced with CE, you can have that unified experience of having a, a, a shared address book. Um, access to customer loyalty cards and reward points. This is very much focused on the commerce side as well as you know, so you can uh, you can get that advantage from here. Uh, organization hierarchy, uh, as I spoke about integrated vendor master before, access to finance and tax ref reference data is available because, you know, of course, this is an ERP system and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's also an accounting system as well. So you will get that finance data and tax reference data from the ERP. Um, uh, On-demand price engine experience, uh, experience. So there is a very sophisticated pricing engine within finance and supply chain. Uh, which can be utilized through Dataverse and through dual write in the CE. And you can also have external pricing engines integrations with CE. Um, ability to serve both in-house assets and customer assets through field agents. Uh, as I said, like it's not just uh, you know only CRM aspects of it. Uh, it's now more and more moving towards field service too. And uh, that integration will also be available through dual right, where it will integrate with enterprise asset management, which is uh, which is awesome because um, it's a lot of customers have been asking about it lately. Um, integrated procure to pay uh, experience. This is available. Uh, of course, your per your purchasing can be automated. Uh, your procure to pay. Uh, lives can live in both the systems, the pay part in the ERP system and the procurement part more uh, shared. Um, integrated activities and notes for customer data and documents, ability to look up on hand inventory availability and details. Well, this is very important because now from CE, uh, you can have that visibility. And also uh, with a little bit of customization, you can also link into inventory visibility service, which is a, another recent feature from Microsoft. Project to cash experience is available, um, which is very important as well in terms of project quotations. Okay, so the next uh, slide is basically showing me the prospect to cash process. I'm just gonna quickly go through this. Uh, you have the sales right here, uh, dynamics for sales. You have dual write and finance and operations. You can see accounts, contacts, products and price lists, code, order invoices. And then you can see, you know, the different concepts which basically kind of link with each other. Like, con account is your actually your customer in ERP, the and then it's called like an account in in, in the CE app. Um, we spoke about pricing engines. We spoke about customer master, vendor master, and product master, which you can manage. 
to the slide. Okay. Um, Chad. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the user experience. You want to see, <clears throat> I think Jawad laid a great framework. What is possible with dual write? What are the different concepts and process areas that are covered and encapsulated? And that list is bound to grow, right? Microsoft is continuing to work on this. I know Jawad's Jawad's definitely seen this, and and it's fun getting to see how Microsoft extends it. But from a user experience, what do things look like? I know that's what a lot of people want to know. And so just high level, data from one app is visible in the other, right? And security roles dictate what's visible, what's editable. Uh, quick, quick tip is to pay good attention to security roles and make sure that your security roles align with how your sync is set up, right? So those are important. The concept of the company brings the legal entity onto every form, every form of every record that's going to sync from Dataverse is going to have this company lookup to dictate which legal entity do we need to sync this into, right? And so that defaults. So you can set the default company on the user form. So Microsoft's trying to make it easy to, to pre-fill that. Then you get business logic from both systems when you save. Once you've saved, you know that you can trust that record is in both systems at once. So here we're updating a customer in CE. And you can see I'm updating the name of the customer. We've got dynamic sales on the left, and then we've got supply chain management on the right. I updated the name of the customer, and I'm going to update the address as well. I'm going to change the street name here. And then, like I said, as soon as we save, we're going to be able to see that change in supply chain management or finance. I'm going to hit the save button. It might take a little bit longer to save because it's looking in both systems. And then we're going to hit refresh on the right. And immediately we can see the new name for the customer. And we can also see the updated details for the address. So the street changed from Broadway to, to Main Street here. So that's just an example of showing successful update real time. Sales is going to be talking to the customers. They can update the data and finance is able to use that new data. Here's an example that is a little bit more fun to see um, with this one. Let's see. Well, looks like the GIF is not not playing here. That's odd. But with what I was trying to show with this one is when you save in customer group is a great example. If you save the account in dynamic sales and you didn't put a customer group, then it's going to tell you, hey, you need to put customer group on this account, even though it doesn't show as required on the model driven form, because that's required to create a customer in finance or supply chain management. So those errors are returned back real time from the other system. And it's just a very, very helpful way to make sure that we get a successful save. All right, a little bit from the admin perspective. This is a view of the dual right management page. You get to this through the data management workspace, and you can see all of the different table maps that are currently running. I've got a filter, so only ones that are running are currently showing. You can see the name of the table map. You can see products, a whole bunch of different address related global address book tables, um, all sorts of things in there. The status of the map, uh, all of these are currently running, but maybe it's turned off. Maybe it's currently paused or maybe it's doing the initial sync. Uh, if there are any issues that have happened recently, you'll be able to see that here as well. And then if you want to create a custom table map, this is where you can really extend the native framework. You can create custom table maps. And then you can also set up alerts to manage errors. Here I jumped into the customers v3 contacts table map, and this is syncing customers to contacts, customers and to, to contacts in Dataverse. And here you can see all of the different columns that are being synced both directions, which direction they're going. And here you can also update transformations. You can also see the filters that are being applied to each table. So on the FNO side, for example, it's only filtering out party type of person, right? And then on the Dataverse side, it only brings contacts that are, say is sellable equals true. And then at the top, you've got some other commands. You can run the initial sync. You can add some custom field mappings, etc. 
And then you've got some other related details from the activity sync, the initial sync, the uh, details from the catch up, whenever it's been paused and it's catching up, things like that. So some related details over there. So this is how you can manage it and really allow somebody who doesn't know code to be able to go and see what's going on. I don't know code, but I can go in and modify the mappings here. And so it's very helpful from an IT and a maintenance perspective. All right, Jawad, I'm going to let you cover some of the lessons that we've learned. Thank you, Chad. And that was a real good presentation on you know having both the systems side by side. Uh, OK, so one few, few things which we need to keep in mind around limitations of dual write. Um, these are very important limitations. Uh, does it does not handle high transaction volume, so we need to look at you know if we need to do some kind of performance evaluation before we um, uh, capture all of our initial requirements. So that is an important limita limitation. Um, we have one to one relationship of environments. That is uh, one thing which is really um, sometimes it's a it's a limitation because right now you have one environment on the FNO side and one environment on the CE side. Um, so it basically creates an issue when you have uh, multiple environments on the ERP side and you want you're trying to sync using multiple tenants and you're trying to sync data. Um, you have max of 250 legal entities right now, no support for cross company data sharing. Just like in the ERP, you can share vendor master, you can share customer master between legal entities. Now, when it comes to do a right, then uh, it's a limitation. No support for organization own tables in Dataverse. Uh, added latency for third party integrations and ISVs present in architecture. So, for example, let's say you have an ISV, let's say an Ava, uh, you know, Avalara, right? And you are also syncing with, dual, uh, with CE th through dual write. The latency uh, can be uh, a significant limitation there. Um, so, again, um, performance is an impact. Initial uh, sync limits, uh, Microsoft tells you when not to use it. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, limit of 500,000 rows per run, 24-hour limit for an entity, 40 legal entities max. Uh, less than 10 lookups is something which is uh, feasible, uh, but more than that, create performance issues. Things get complicated um, with a dual rights. So right now we have 134 total uh, out of the box entity maps, which are available. You can always customize them. Um, a single save doesn't more than what you think. So it with one single save, you are basically in the back end. There are five or six operations which are happening. Uh, very important to uh, uh, you know uh, consider. Uh, align your environments with the same as your data center as your data center, which uh, region or location it is in, uh, for two main reasons. One is the latency, and the other one is the disaster recovery aspect of it. Um, successful data migration is pivotal, of course it is uh, for any uh, implementation, but for this one is is especially important because you need to make sure that you know what is in included in your data migration effort versus what is included in your initial sync. And how are you doing your or performing your data migration? Um, beware the known limits. And then just some considerations we want you to consider. Uh, some questions to think as you're considering dual write. You know, what data do you really need going back and forth? How much capacity do you have in Dataverse? Do you maybe need to not use out of the box some of the some of the things that come turned on with dual write? There, there's a lot that you might actually break if you just turn dual write on without considering what's included in that. Well, my transaction volume cause issues. This could be a reason using it out of the box might cause issues. You might need to apply some filtering if you've got some heavy transactional volume that, or something like that. And then how are you going to do data migration? Who's going to support it? And from the model driven app side on Dataverse, who's going, how, how will that look different for the users there? Some suggestions. First and foremost, read the documentation. You got to know the pool, know the tool before you turn it on. Be thoughtful in how you approach application lifecycle management, data migration, and security. Just three big call outs with that. Make sure you have uh, an eye on the errors that are going on. Be sure you think sync sync thoughtfully. So make sure you don't sync more than you need. And you want to try to align database differences. So a field length, 
of 40 characters versus 20 characters in either system, you will get an error when you try to save with too many. And trying to align those can help the user experience. And also, similarly, try to customize the forms and the model-driven apps and make sure that those are tailored for the, the integration that we've got. Number sequences are the last thing we want to suggest. Make sure you have a plan for the number of sequences in both systems, how they'll, which system the, a customer is going to be generated from, for example. Quick bit on licensing. If you're talking about unrestricted dataverse tables, you don't have to worry about anything. But if from the FNO side, if you're writing to a restricted dataverse table, then that FNO user is going to need a proper license for example, project operations. They'll need that proper license. And you get Dataverse capacity with your licenses for FNO apps. All right, Jawad, do you want to talk quickly on the path forward? What's next? Sure thing. Path forward is exciting um, for dual write and these integrations between Dynamics apps. What you see on your screen is basically uh, the next concept or the concept Microsoft has been working on is one Dynamics, one platform. So right now you have LCS, which manages the ERP, the finance and supply chain um, implementation lifecycle or ALM. But then you have uh, Dataverse, which is the backend database for your CE and also Power um, Admin Center, uh, which manages the overall uh, management of the, uh, of the environments. So going forward um, th th this concept, this will be a unified experience. Um, so one developer, uh, one developer, which means that you still have X plus plus, but you will have mostly low code, no code uh, availability, and uh, you know uh, options to set up all of these, uh, uh, both of these systems. Then you have uh, as LCS is moving to Power Platform Admin Center, so you will have a unified experience in terms of setting these up. Um, user interface is converging, uh, which means that. Uh, users will be so right now users can still uh, integrate D365 finance and supply chain with a canvas app or with a model driven app so that will be a more and more unifying experience where you will be able to see both you know apps created using power platform and then your ERP itself um, so that it, it this this is a very uh, important concept or a future next step for dual right or these types of integrations Call to action, uh, follow Microsoft leads uh, as of course, right? So um, we have, we need to align our data using, uh, if we need to align our data using uh, dual right, we need to make sure that we have proper environment, uh, proper uh, environment requirements and proper business process requirements captured as part of your solution blueprint. Take it slowly, uh, crawl, uh, walk and then run. So you start with less entity maps and then you expand your entity maps based on your requirements. Uh, evaluate true data synchronization needs, what exactly is needed as part of your solution. Uh, of course, don't do this alone. Uh, Storage is here to help you. Chat. And just to close things out, thanks, Jawad. To close things out, we've talked about integration projects. If you are considering an integration project of your own, if you need some help, reach out. Like Jawad said, we want to help you. We've got a great team here. Uh, if you already have something, you need some training, that's another great option. Licensing. We can do a lot. And so please, please reach out solutions at stonebridgesoftware.com. And finally, to, to wrap up, follow us on LinkedIn, check out our events page on our website, and please fill out that post event survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. And plus, you get entered for some free swag. So thanks so much. Thank you.